to the channel. So I'm gonna just put together a couple of clips I decided to make uh, in modifying the Zenmuse H3 3-axis gimbal that is has been commonly purchased over the past year or two for this DJI Phantom. And it was typically designed to fly a Hero 3 or Hero 3 Plus. Um, I illustrate in my next clips what uh, the difference is between the two, but just to sum it up, you actually have um, a button on uh, this side of the Hero that actually toggles the Wi-Fi trigger and the settings menu on the Hero 4. Uh, on the Hero 3, it's just a Wi-Fi trigger. Uh, basically, um, the problem with the H3 gimbal uh, is that there's a little bit of material that actually comes in contact with the raised button on the Hero 4, causing it to depress the Wi-Fi. Um, and that could potentially be a huge problem in flight if the Wi-Fi turns on. It will screw up everything with the receiver and the transmitter and you could have a crash or a flyaway on your hands. It also will start toggling through the tools and the settings of the actual GoPro's shooting mode and that's not good either. So uh, the idea is to remove the material or drop another 400 bucks on a new gimbal, which I don't know about you guys, but I don't have an extra four or $500 laying around to buy another gimbal just to fly the Hero 4. So uh, in my uh, clips here, I'll show you how I did it and then I'll do some close-ups of what it looks like uh, finished product here. But you'll notice here it's already been done and it's mounted uh, on the Phantom, Vision, uh, Phantom 2 uh, and there is no problems at all. And it actually works perfectly fine and it's perfectly balanced and uh, no need to spend extra money. So enjoy these clips and then I'll sum it up at the end. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, what you're looking at here is a Zen Muse H3 3-axis gimbal for the DJI Phantom. And a lot of the problem um, that people are having is they're upgrading to the Hero 4 like myself and GoPro has wonderfully put the Wi-Fi uh, slash menu button on the side of the GoPro uh, just like before but the problem is is that they made it raised just a tiny bit to hit uh, this little area right here on the gimbal so I'll illustrate what I'm talking about here right here is a Hero 4 and basically when it slides into the gimbal over here it's gonna hit uh, this little raised black button right here. And the problem with that is, is it actually turns on and off the Wi-Fi. And if you're flying a Phantom and the Wi-Fi comes on, you're just asking for trouble uh, with the radio receiver and transmission signal for the actual Phantom's controller. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is illustrate how I'm gonna modify my gimbal so it'll accept the Hero 3 and the Hero 4 by not allowing that button to be pushed in. So right now, um, I have the shot set up to where you're seeing the gimbal here um, in my vise and I actually have a piece of leather in between the jaws and it's just ever so gently clamped down just so it won't really get out of control. You can still see I can move it here. It's not tight enough to where it's bending the gimbal's frame. You wanna really make sure uh, you're careful about that. So, uh, word of caution, do this at your own risk, obviously. This is, they make a gimbal that'll accommodate the H4, um, but who the hell wants to spend another $400 on a gimbal when they already got a perfectly good working one? So, um, next shot I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna cover all the uh, axis points up um, with uh, some protective, I'll probably use, uh, like Mick Bergsman did in his video, a sock. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cover everything up to where no shavings of metal are gonna come into contact uh, with the motors because that would be a uh, big no-no for um, smooth operation. So let me get that shot set up now and then I'll pick it up here in the next clip. Okay, so I have some just nasty old socks laying around here that I'm not gonna use for anything else anymore. So I'm gonna start just kind of covering uh, the base part of the gimbal and then also this back uh, rotor, uh, whatever you want to call it, that controls the yaw of the gimbal here. And just kind of bring it around so no shavings can go in that direction there. And then I'm just going to kind of wrap it around again here. And really just the idea is to just make sure you're going to be working right here in this area here removing material. So the idea is to get it to where you're minimizing the chances of small metal shavings and debris uh, getting into the actual rotational points on the actual gimbal there. So that looks pretty good. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is, you'll see here I have a, um, this is a sanding wheel mounted to a Dremel here. 
Um, and basically, I'm just going to use a sanding wheel at low speed now. Don't use high speed. Low speed, and basically just just kind of work on this corner right here. I, you're not. You want to make sure not to get into this little pivot point that's all the way through the gimbal. Just work on the corner and use very low speed. Um, you start using high speed, you're going to start getting yourself into all sorts of problems because it may want to walk off. And if it runs off and hits the circuit board back here, if it runs off and hits the frame, you're going to you're going to start screwing things up. So let me get that shot set up and we'll start working on it. Okay, here we go. So I basically have my Dremel plugged in here, um, and I'm just going to start working on just this bottom ear here. And a good rule of reference is to just kind of look at the GoPro as it would be mounted, and you can get an idea of how much you want to remove out. Now you can go ahead and mark yours, but I'm pretty comfortable in knowing where this material has to come out of. And right now I'm just running on speed two. So it's starting to look pretty good there, pretty even. Um, not a whole lot of material comes out, but it should be just enough, so. And the trick is to not remove too much material. Um, always test it, so I'm gonna go ahead and test it now to see if we got enough out. Okay guys, looks like we got just enough out. You can see where I removed the material right here, and it just almost makes like a half moon shape, almost like a half, like of a, a bowl or something. So if you take your GoPro now, and if I slip it in here, perfect. It doesn't make any button pressing. And I'll actually uh, cut to another clip here where I show you uh, in better light how uh, precisely you can machine something down um, and make it almost factory to where you don't have to start buying yourself another $400 or $500 gimbal. So I'll cut to that next. Okay, here's the gimbal taken off the Phantom here, and you'll notice that the GoPro is just kind of resting in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off and show you exactly what we're talking about here, finished product. So you'll see here, if I can get it to uh, get a little bit of a close up for us, you'll notice that the piece of the side frame of the gimbal, which is right there, has been removed by the Dremel. And that's all you need to take out so it doesn't interfere uh, with uh, that button right there, that little settings button. Unfortunately, um, GoPro thought it was a good idea to, you can see the button there just kind of sticking out, just to make it stick out just enough to where, you know, you gotta buy new stuff to keep their stuff going on. I guess I understand it, it's business. But that's uh, basically how much comes out. So looking at it from the side, should be able to get a good idea how much came out of there. Now what I'm gonna do, since I'm very um, uh, meticulous about how things are done, I don't like the way you can just see the raw metal there. That can introduce rusting or something down the road, who knows, um, I just don't like the way it looks. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually touch that up with a little bit of um, uh, metal paint, just to give it that look that I'm, that I'm going for, so it looks like it came from the factory that way. There we go, that should do it. I put a little black paint on there and I'll put another coat on there when that dries, but it'll look like it never it never was affected ever from the, from the factory setting there. So I hope this video helped people. I know there's a couple of videos out there that already showed kind of the quote unquote hack, but I figured I'd maybe try to do something in HD and just kind of show you the process of doing it. Um, it may help people. So if you like these kind of videos, make sure you subscribe, rate, comment, all that good stuff. I'm going to be trying to do some more DJI Phantom videos like out in the field uh, just to kind of show some real life, real world cases of what you know you can kind of do with yours and um, just get you interested in the hobby. So thanks for watching guys. Talk to you later.